Good morning, everybody. This is Marco Junta with uh, Chris and Steve, and uh, David is on location today. Yes, you're absolutely right. You know, you can sneeze. This is not like you know a quality podcast. You can actually sneeze and cough and burp and whatever it takes. <coughs> That's better. Okay, we'll edit that out, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll, we'll do we'll, in post production. In post production, got it. And we do one. We're live again. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, every year we do the um, the sarcastic SE uh, sorry, CS news, and, the, and last week we did the pre CS, all the stuff that we thought was going to be there, and this week I figure we'll follow up with uh, all the things that surprisingly won awards or didn't win award, but really cool. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, um, quick shout this week. We'll uh, go, just go through some of the stuff. Um, who wants to start? Steve, you ready? Chris? Anybody? Um, Great. So, one of the things that um, I'll, I'll go ahead and kick it off. Thank you. Um, on, a web, on a website called Pocket Lint, there's a uh, there's a roundup of top things, and you can take a look at that. We'll put that into the show notes. Um, but one of the things that caught my eye, which I think could actually be, you know, a real, a really cool game changer, is that Alcatel um, showed off a, a new telephone called the One Touch. And the interesting thing about it is that it has a transparent solar cell that's covering the display. So just by putting your phone in the light, it'll start charging itself, which is a pretty cool concept. Um, yeah, I, I've I've um, I've seen people try solar panels before. If they've been successful, does anybody have one? Because at one point I tried to buy one, but it wasn't. You know, it was all time. No. <clears throat> no. Well, I think you know the the. I think the idea is that if the solar cell is on the front, you know, where you're looking at it, then that's more likely going to be in the light. <laughs> And right. so I think that's a great idea because mo- too often I've seen solar cells on the back, you know, on, on aftermarket um, chargers and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Which is a good idea, idea, but you know, when I put my phone down on the desk, it's it's face up so I can see what it's doing. And you know, so it's just it just seems like a really a really good idea to to make a transparent solar cell you know that you what? can see through. You know what they had a lot of, you know, talking about charging? Did you guys see the wireless charging when you can do it like 10 feet away? I didn't see that. I, I, yeah. Yeah. That scares me. You know, it, good, I'm glad you said that because I thought I was the only one who was really scared by that. Yeah, it's like try to try to sell a house that's underneath a power line. You know, it's the same <laughs> concept, right? Yeah. I mean, really, what, that's what you're talking about. You're talking about lots of power going through the air. Yeah, so I, I was I mean, hoping just... I wasn't the only one scared by that. You know, it's like, do I want to fry everybody in the house or do I want to put up with having a wire sticking out of thing for an hour? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, how, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not real pleased with having to have that thing hanging on my head all day, um, you know, that, that I'm talking through and all, and and. You know, but I don't think I want to get to the point where I'm also juicing that thing, you know, mm-hmm. 10 feet away. Right. So, you know what I've done with that? Um, I've opted into the uh, wired um, helmet? Wired headphones. Yeah, wired, <laughs> wired headphones. <laughs> Uh, I know the wired headphones. headphones. Yeah. And, uh, and I stopped all, yeah, I stopped all Bluetooth for that reason. And just don't trust it. I probably should. I wear I wear a uh, I wear a, a Wi-Fi wired headphone. I love the I love the fact that I can walk literally anywhere in my office, and you know and and use my wireless headphone headset. It's it's not the 44 range of a Bluetooth. It's a 400 foot range of a of a Wi-Fi signal. Oh wow! Um, Is it, I don't, I don't think, I've never seen one of those. Have you seen one, Steve? I haven't seen one like that. Yeah, yeah it's it's the camera. I've seen some. 
something like that, but not not with that good a range. Yeah, it, it's you know I'm addicted to it, I, and and it's probably another problem. I probably wear it three four hours a day. Um, is, it, is it really clear? Oh yeah, yeah, it's great. You you can't tell. You talked to me on a half a dozen times. And you wouldn't know. Oh really? Yeah. Hmm. And how long does the battery last? Um, it's probably three or four hours. Hmm. Okay, I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I mean it's not new. It's it's been around for a while. It's it's a Jabra, and I'll I'll. I'll stick a link to it in the show notes so that everybody can take a look at it. You have uh, surprised me again. <laughs> hey, can we not talk about cases? Um, <laughs> gee, that they're so enthralling. <laughs> I actually believe that a good portion of the of the show was about cases, cases and Bluetooth speakers. Yeah. Yep. I don't. I, I just don't get the whole Bluetooth speaker thing. Have you ever seen one I mean, in the is wild? It, have you ever seen? Is anybody? it because I'm old? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I mean, my kids don't want them either. We we use a Bluetooth speaker in the office, you know, just to listen to music, you know, because mm -hmm. we've got a group of people that that you know are, are more technical. They're not on the phone a lot, and they just use a Bluetooth speaker, and then they just can pass the speaker around to person to person virtually. Yes. You know, okay, you can take it. You know, kind of stuff. And and it's, I mean, that's about the that's about the extent. That's a, that's the only time I've ever seen one <laughs> being used. I, I I I mean, I go to parties every once in a while, and somebody mm -hmm. have a Bose in the corner, but mm -hmm. I don't want one. My kids don't want one. I don't know who's buying these Bluetooth speakers. And, and by the way, the best useless kind of a cool idea product and it was the case with the Bluetooth speaker in it. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that was my favorite. For one, well, I guess that means you don't have this to. Is the, this is the only Bluetooth speaker I have. And the only reason I have this one is it's for my Surface and it doubles as a speakerphone. Yeah. Is that clear? Right. It's pretty. It's pretty good. Who makes that one? It's like one of those box. Jam box. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I actually had one from Plantronics, mm -hmm. and I actually gave it to somebody. It was it was more of a, a Bluetooth uh, telephone, a conference yeah. phone, and I gave that to uh, one of my uh, peers. Mm -hmm. Um, so I saw something that was really cool. It's called the Dash, talking about headphones. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we were talking about headphones, but it's it's almost like a, it's almost like an earring aid. It's uh, made by Bragi, B R A G I. <clears throat> it's called the Dash, and it's actually two headphones that go into your ear like like I would imagine like an hearing head would hearing aid would. Mm -hmm. There's no wires. Yeah. Wireless yeah, wireless headset, but it's instead of connected to each other, they're completely independent. Right, right. I I don't know how good they work. Um I, I think we talked about that like about a year ago when it was on uh, Kickstarter. Oh it was? And they were and they were at CES and people were showing it. Um, they were showing prototypes. They didn't have the, the devices. They're coming out later this spring. Yeah, and I don't know how long the battery lasts or any kind of specs on it. They're kind of intriguing kind of thing. I would have a feeling that I would lose it. The um, mm -hmm. One of the interesting things was is they were packing a whole lot of stuff into it. It was going to be a pedometer and a, and a heart rate monitor. Yeah, that's what they're doing. On t yeah, on top of just being a, a Bluetooth headset um, and microphone. Um, so it could be a Bluetooth, you know, telephone thing. Yeah, but if it, uh, I've never had much luck. Maybe it's because of my voice, but I've never had much luck with um, uh, when the speaker is in the somewhere else. It's it's no, it's not. It's mm. there's lots of issues. <laughs> yeah, this is the like I have these. Can you guys see them? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, these are 
the monster ones, which you know them as beats, <laughs> as you know from the lawsuit. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, these suck. Um, they're, they're, not, they're not very good. They're, they're, yeah. I mean, they're, that's a great idea. You can you can do sound really well, but you can do sound with anything. Microphone sucks. Mm. Yeah. Um, how about car stuff? I was kind of surprised. There's a whole bunch of Insta in dash stereos coming out with mm -hmm. the AirPlay and the Google Play. Yeah. And I'm yeah. surprised that the car industries are letting that happen. I don't, well, I don't know. They can't do a whole lot about aftermarket stuff, right? Well, but yeah. the, the, the whole thing was that the Apple was uh, licensing the AirPlay to the, to the manufacturers. Yeah. And you know, the, yeah. the other thing I thought was odd that both the Google and the the Google box and the Apple box yeah. are all are both um, um, running on something like they're not standalone. It's just like software. Really. Yeah, so, like, you know, um, Steve, you have the Bentley. This would have to actually be <laughs> in the Bentley um, operating system. Almost like a virtual box. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of these, um, <clears throat> this emphasis on these self-parking cars, too, right? You got... BMW and VW, and I think there was a couple others that were big on demo demoing their self-parking car. Does, does anybody need that? Um, yeah, <laughs> I think that, that that's actually a really cool thing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, have you ever been to Have you ever been to the mall at Christmas time? No, that's why they made Amazon. Easy. <laughs> 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 they, they got created Amazon, so you never have to shop again in the mall. <laughs> no, but even like if you're in, in the city, if you're in those kind of places, and you know, not a not a performance driver like you, Steve, but for, <laughs> for like 16, 17, 18 year old kids, or or any wives, that's a really good thing. Especially the one that hit me the other day, while parallel parking. Oh, so. I don't know. Um, you know. You know what confuses me on that one? Hmm. When you look at self-parking, when you look at, um, you know, the automatic brakes, mm -hmm. so you're about to hit something, the brakes go on, the rear view camera, those things should be in every car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't care what it costs, it should be in every car. I, I, it just, it just, you know, if you live in New York, but they, I think they, yeah, you know, they're getting ready to, you know, set the bar there. Yeah. You know, they, I mean, they're they're going to make cars communicate with each other and all that kind of stuff. Um, and Honda came out with the backup cameras in in every single model this year. Yeah. And mm -hmm. So it's going to, it's going to fall into looking at stuff that's just going to become, you know, it, it, you, you used to have to pay extra for the cassette in your stereo in your car. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, but the cassette doesn't, doesn't save your life. That's true. Right, that, that's the other thing I'm saying is, you know, when somebody comes up with an innovation like that, this is something that should be rolled out, maybe even retroactively. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, how about the... Um, this drives me crazy. The, the the things on the eyes, the three, the, the vision. Oh man! The goggle thing. The virtual reality stuff. Is it is this something else? That you, uh, has anybody seen one of these in a while? Well, before we yeah, before we move on from cars, we, we've let's, got to talk about the Mercedes. Let's go back to cars. Let's talk about my Mercedes. Yeah, because the, the new Mercedes and you know, self-driving cars is kind of like one of my. Um, one of my cars to celeb. I think it's going to be a huge thing, and I think it's going to change your lives. And, mm -hmm. and people are talking about it in five or ten years, and I think that they're being short-sighted. I really think that it's going to be much more quickly than that. 
Cadillac talked about their first car is going to be 17. So that's oh, wow. two years away now. Um, and I think that... Um, <laughs> that's just, sorry, that's just fun by itself. <laughs> Cadillac and self-driving cars. And <laughs> Um, yeah, they, they're they're basing it on the Microsoft Surface. No, 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 I'm joking. Um, <laughs> probably, um, on the, probably on the BlackBerry, but that's yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. There you go. There you go. Um, it, it's um, it's very interesting um, that you know Mercedes started showing a a prototype. You know, um, what do you call? It? I can't remember the term. Um, you know, a car that, that nobody's ever going to build, you'll never see. But it had to it had a couple interesting things, right? It has um, it has a bit of a dashboard, it actually has a steering wheel, but when you're not using it, the steering wheel folds up back into the dashboard and goes away. And the front seats turn around and face the rear. Um, you know, so they swivel. So you can sit either facing the front or the rear. Um, and I think that that kind of stuff is going to become more common because if you don't need to drive the car, why do you need to face the front? Mm -hmm. Because it's much safer to be facing the rear. Right. Do you remember the swivel seat cars in the 70s? Yeah. Well, no, I don't. <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. It looks like a bit of a living room kind of thing, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's where you know that's where cars are going to go. I mean, w once you start saying you know, hey, windows are optional. You know, you don't need a windshield. You know, then the shape of the car can change pretty radically in the design of it, and get tremendously more safe. Yeah, planes were the same thing, right? So Boeing came out with a um, a plane that you said like some like twenty five pe people across. Hmm. People across, and when they did focus group, this was no longer this was this was in the last five years, maybe mm -hmm. maybe ten. I'm kind of old. And when they did all the the studies, people didn't want to fly in those planes because they couldn't see out. Hmm. Just interesting. I don't think I think it's meaningless, but it's you could you could solve that. No, I think screens, today video screens. Yeah. You can, yeah, with with screens that you know have selectors and cam, you know, yeah. with cameras around the outside and things like that, and, and in a car, you know, you could stick those up pretty, you know, pretty cheaply. There was one of the things I saw recently was BMW was prototyping a um, a display system, which is um, it's kind of like what what pilots get in in helicopters, and fighter planes, and things. I think the cost of it would probably be prohibitive. But the idea was that it would it would look at where your head was looking, and, and the car would know where your head was. And they had d cameras mounted all around the car, and they had a display screen on like the pillar between the front and rear seats. Mm -hmm. And so when you would turn your head and look in that direction, it would turn on that display screen and show you what you should be seeing out there. Oh, like the HUDs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like the head-up display that the pilots see and things like that, where that you know the, the the pilot could look straight down through the body of the plane and he sees the ground. I've you know, seen that. Puts, yeah. I flew on SAS a few months back and they actually had that where you uh, they had a, like a camera facing forward and one facing down that you could like tune mm -hmm. into on the little TV on your on your screen. Yeah. Come yeah. On. Completely useless. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's like when my mother flies. She doesn't like to go to sleep, and I always say to her, "Yeah, just in case the pilot needs somebody to help him fly the plane, and you can't <laughs> he's going to look at you. You're sleeping. He's oh, I guess we're going to have to crash." <laughs> um, so, talking about that car that you were talking about, it's interesting because CES has always got this bit of vaporware that never mm -hmm. gets done. Yes. No. Really? Uh, yeah. It's the ES. Yeah, uh, I know, I know, I'm crazy. Um, I'm shocked. Yeah. It's not the Ryan Seacrest keyboard, though. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> that was, it's, it's, Couldn't it's, resist that plug. It's, it's the version <laughs> 2. The version 2 has just came out. Mm -hmm. I, I missed that. Bring me up to date, please. <laughs> no, please, please don't. It's, me it's, it's Marco's favorite technology. <laughs> so what Ryan Seacrest did... He was using a BlackBerry. <laughs> um, by the way, 
Ryan Seacrest started his career on um, on MSNBC when it was before it was a news. It used to be a. Well, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, before it was news, mm -hmm. it was it used to be it was all technology. Was it MSNBC? Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, yeah, With the, yeah. The, the site was the big show mm -hmm. with Leo Laporte. He started as the technology guy, right? And he is the less technology-able person in the world. <laughs> so he had a BlackBerry, and he didn't want to let go of his BlackBerry, but he wanted to go to, you know, where all the kids are going, to the iPhone. <laughs> That's where the cool kids are. And so he came up with another guy in a startup coming up with a keyboard that clips onto the iPhone, and it's really the BlackBerry keyboard. And then they sued him for it, too. He, he couldn't get it out for a while because they were... They were suing him. They were locked up in court. Something about copying the BlackBerry keyboard exactly the way it is <laughs> and sticking it in an iPhone. And people got upset. Really? Yeah, but yeah. he's got deep pockets, and they came around that, I don't know, maybe he gave him a licensing. And now he's got a version 2. You mm -hmm. should probably look for it. I'll give you the link in a second. And, and just the craziest, craziest thing that you would actually do. Um, uh, on your phone. Mm -hmm. just, it's crazy. And, and it's, it's making money. So I'm looking at Wired's. We picked the 10 best gadgets at CES. And yeah. one of them is a Sony Handycam. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, and did you see yeah. the did you see the Sony Walkman that they're coming? Yes, out? I saw that. But it's like twelve hundred dollars or something ridiculous, right? It's like it's supposed to be high fidelity or something. The, curious or I'm curious. It's a Pogo. <laughs> you know what the Pogo is, right? Yeah, the Pogo, yeah. The Pogo uh -huh. is the um, uh, what's it? Neil Young. Neil Young. Neil Young. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Here, uh, here's the um. Here's a keyboard. Um, I'm giving you the. So I stuck a link in, in, in the show notes for the uh, Sony Handycam that Wired likes a lot. They seem to be going for the weirdest stuff. They've also got the Sony 4K Ultra Show Throw Projector. So it's a projector that sits on the floor up against the wall, and it will project on that wall. Did you give me that link? Which is, which is an ultra short, short throw, but in, in the age of LED TVs, I well, would choose on the projector. Yeah. I did, uh, <clears throat> you know, the one thing I did think was pretty cool of Sony is if you look at, I posted in the notes there too. Where is it? And it's uh, right near the, right after Chris's the first CIO, post. The CIO one? <laughs> yeah, it's got the new Sony Ultra 4K TV that's like, Millimeters thick. It looks like a just like a slice of glass. It's supposed to be thinner yeah. than a cell phone. So here, here's what I thought was interesting, right? Because the, the bigger they get, the flatter they get, the harder it is to see mm -hmm. around the room. So what they've done is they made them thin, and mm -hmm. they made them curved. Mm -hmm. So what is the problem with putting a curved TV on your straight wall? Now um, a 70 inch TV yeah. that comes off if it's on each side. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't get that. Well, why, they, just, they, they made them thinner, got a new problem, so they figure out they make. Uh, figure out. So now we have to. Uh, um, so now we have to make um, curved walls. Yeah. Hey, what's the smart glasses thing? Smart reading glasses, the thin optic smart green, green glasses. I haven't seen that. Yeah, on the same link, just go to 425. I got it. I think it's just they just fit in a case. Never mind. Mm -hmm. uh, finally I mean, yeah. found a good, if they finally found a good use for the for the smart board, you can play Monopoly on your on, a, on, on your table now. That's 525. On your 65 inch. $10,000. Yeah, oh, 65-inch tablet. 
everybody's going to have one of those. <laughs> yeah, this, is a, this is the definition. I'm replacing my, my breakfast table with that. Yeah, no, I, I would love to do that so the kids won't have to look to the right to watch the TV. They could just look down. And they, mm -hmm. But yeah, here's the issue with this. Um, this is your typical trying to validate your product and trying to have a product in search of a solution. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just break out the Monopoly board? <laughs> so, Maybe it's good if you've got somebody who's volatile and they can't, you know, play a game without like sweeping all the pieces off the table or something. Yeah. Man, I guess. Um, <clears throat> um, anything more on the big uh, tablets coming out? There's a whole bunch of big tablets coming out. There's a lot of tablet oh, stuff. My favorite thing. What about the socks? The the Internet of Things socks. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, there's there's all sorts of Internet of Things. Yeah, that the shoe inserts. Yeah. Yeah. You know. The slink, the slink yeah. TV was my favorite one, and I think it won like best in show or something. The and what? Sling. Oh, the Sling TV the sling. from the old Sling Box yeah, guys. Sling Box. Yeah. Uh, it's still the old Sling Box. But why don't you, don't, don't you, if you want to watch TV, could you just get that on your cell phone instead of having a box that you connect your cell phone to? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Up in the sling, and of course the, uh, the, um, um, the hat, the cap with the, with the sensors in it. Yeah, the, the uh, non-concussion hat. Yes. The hat that tells you when you've got a concussion. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like the one that tells you the the heartbeat, your phone that tells you when you're dead. <laughs> I, you know, there's a there's a whole bunch of these things that are, that are out there. Um, I, the, the only thing I can tell you is that it was nothing that really wowed me. No, uh, there's a lot of home automation stuff too. I'll have to get David's opinion on that when he's. <laughs> um, the the only <coughs> issue with the home automation stuff is there's no platform. There's yeah. no standard platform for any of these things. No, you had like ten, yeah. ten of these companies trying to be that like one platform. What's, what's the con Yeah, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, but but isn't a a smart power plug kind of useless for a lot of things? You know, I mean, I could see maybe a microwave oven or something, right? But you can't put a smart power plug on your fridge, <laughs> right? Yeah. Or you for your toaster, a, but... <laughs> you can't put a smart power plug on a computer, you know, or, or anything that communicates on its own. No. Nope. You know, so it's so it's really, it's it's things that you can only switch on and off, like lights. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? The, the, your, it doesn't do you any good to put one on a toaster. It yeah. doesn't make the toaster do anything new. No, no, you, you need an old school toaster. You just put your toast in it and you put it down and then, like, you tell it to turn on at, like, 7 a.m. right before you get up. Yeah, like the, like the, like the bacon so. clock. <laughs> Here's what I think that the opportunity is. The opportunity is to get um, light bulbs with the stuff already built in. Because to your point, Chris... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ninety-nine percent of the stuff you want to do is turning lights on and off. Now they're, they're starting to do that with these LED lights yeah. that are like yeah. have Wi-Fi built in. They have speakers built in. They got all kinds of stuff they're building in. Right. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and that's been out for a while. I love to see that more of that. Mm -hmm. Well, those make more sense because you're not having to change out light sockets and you know switches and everything too, right? You yeah, the only thing that doesn't make sense is that <clears throat> now I have to replace a $50 light bulb, $60 light bulb every time they blow out a light bulb. Right, yeah, that's true. Although that, the LEDs, yeah. you, don't blow, you don't blow LEDs out, do you? Mm. No, they, yeah, they last 50,000 hours. They'll last yeah, 10 years. Yeah, so. they're supposed to last a long time. Yeah. Well, I think we've come to the bottom of the... Um, <laughs> <cynical sarcastic>. Well... <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> Um, 
uh, I have no intention of going to this next CES. Um, I think it's more fun <coughs> reading about it. I mean, I'd love to go and and do the CES thing just because it's fun, but. Yeah. Yeah, having not been, I'd, I'd like to go once. Maybe we, you and I can go next year. Perhaps. Maybe we should start. Perhaps. Maybe we should put a uh, a Kickstarter to send you and me and uh, Steve and. Yeah. Yeah. Do, to see, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I can see lots of people would donate to the concept of us going to CES. Yeah, yeah, first first I see them donate to worse causes. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yes, I resemble that statement. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much. And another one is in the can. My name is Marco Junta, and you are? Chris Keefe. And, and Stephen Webster. Guys, thank you so much. Look at uh, look at our site, techreact.com, and I will see you uh, soon. Thank you, everybody. Next week. Bye-bye.